brother. So Ben, I must say, I've been thinking all weekend, who would win Koala versus Platypus? So let's dive right into it. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of research about koalas and platypuses. Platypi? Platypus? How, what's the plural? And I've discovered that the platypus is maybe one of the most interesting things I've ever read about, and the koala is maybe the most boring creature on the planet. First of all, koala bears? Not even bears! So that's disappointing right off the bat. The platypus, on the other hand, doesn't even know what it is. It's got the feet of an otter, the tail of a beaver, and the bill of a duck. Plus, they're land and water-based. Koalas, on the other hand, you could say are land-based, but really not even. They're more like tree-based. Koalas can actually go their whole life without ever setting foot on the ground. And it's not like they do a whole lot while they're sitting up in their eucalyptus trees, Ben. They're pretty much just eating or sleeping. In fact, most of the time they're completely motionless. Platypuses, on the other hand, can swim and developed a fun way of walking on their knuckles to protect their webbed feet. Yeah, walking on their knuckles, you know, like a gorilla, because it needed another animal to be compared to. Now, since koalas aren't bears, it's not surprising that they are vegetarians, but what's even more boring about them is they're not even, like, exciting vegetarians. All they eat are eucalyptus leaves. They don't expand on their diet at all. They're not even like trying to invite their friends over to convince them that their vegetarian lasagna is just as good as regular lasagna. It most certainly is not. Now a lot of people think eucalyptus leaves get koalas high, which is not true. What is true is that the eucalyptus leaves are poisonous to most animals, but koalas have built up an immunity. Now that would actually be useful in a fight against the platypus because, wait for it, platypuses are venomous. That's right, Ben, the duck otter beaver that walks like a gorilla can also poison you. What you got for that, koalas? Oh, you have two opposable thumbs on each hand? Well, I guess you'd probably be pretty good at video games, so there's that. Platypuses use the poison not only to mark territory against other male platypuses, but also as a defense mechanism because they do have natural predators. This is one area where the koala wins because it actually has no natural predators. In fact, it doesn't even have to worry about bugs because all the eucalyptus it eats makes it smell so bad that it acts as a pesticide for the creature. Predators must really hate the smell of eucalyptus because, like I said before, Koalas are completely motionless. They're like 20 pound meat sacks just sitting in trees. They're not even moving. Ben, have I mentioned that the platypus's identity crisis continues while it's giving birth? Because it doesn't actually give birth like most mammals. It's the only mammal that lays eggs. Koalas, on the other hand, have babies just like everything else. <sighs> How boring. Actually, that's not true. Baby koalas or joeys have the advantage of being both blind and deaf. Of course, I guess when blind people acquire sight, it's considered a miracle. So in a way, every koala undergoes a miracle. But not to be one up, platypuses were all like, oh, hey, while well, you were learning how to like see and hear and stuff, we were using our bills to develop electroception. That's right, platypuses use their bills to detect disturbances in the electric fields in the air around them. And by disturbances, I mean movement. So if you like move your arm, they know, they can feel it in their bills. I swear I'm not making any of this up. So Ben, in the fight between the platypus and the meat bag, sorry, koala, I'm giving to the platypus, hands down. So Ben, my question for you and everybody else is, what is your favorite animal? Let me know down in the towel section below and I will see you in another life, brother.